uh, Dr. David Hansen was so weird. So um, Dr. Hansen is an expert in AI. Can you tell us something about the future in different kind of industries? Say for example, uh, creative art, fashion, or maybe wellness? What will be the future using AI? AI can help in so many ways uh, for creativity. So it can accelerate and enhance human creativity, giving us uh, new ideas, collaborating with the technologies. Uh, and then also uh, treating artificial intelligence and robotics as new media for new kinds of creativity and artistry, then can create uh, uh, many uh, kinds of experiences for people in terms of uh, fashion, the arts, entertainment, and also the uh, other applications of arts, such yeah. as for education uh, and other kinds of communications, yeah. healthcare, therapy applications. Yeah. Um, and so yeah. Yeah. Um, we need human creativity. Mm -hmm. um, ultimately, these kinds of technologies are only in, uh, as valuable as mm -hmm. they enhance human lives. Mm -hmm. um, so what we need to do is open up the tools mm -hmm. for AI and robotics yeah. for people to use mm -hmm. to creatively diversify yeah. what AI can be in yeah. people's lives mm -hmm. to make people's lives better. Yeah. So um, going to uh, in in depth about the question will be a compliance or regulation because it's so new. When you talk about uh, open up a lot of tools for people to improve or maybe increase their high order of the creativity. Yeah. So what kind of things we need? Uh, say yes. What we need to observe about compliance regulations of using AI robot. Well, the first thing is that we have to make sure that these technologies are compliant with. Uh, privacy, and uh -huh. data security, and um, that includes uh, the GDPR laws, HIPAA compliant, COPA mm -hmm. compliant. We have to look out for vulnerable populations right. to make sure that AI does not um, obtain people's mm -hmm. data mm -hmm. and use those data without our permission or our knowledge. Right. Um, and also, with especially with vulnerable populations mm -hmm. who do not have the ability to give uh, true informed consent. So therefore, we need to uh, uh, to solve issues like anonymization of data or uh, local data and ownership of data. So people control and own their own data, even um, uh, to whether they know um, that that technology companies and governments are taking these measures. We have a responsibility. Every person, government, and organization has the responsibility to look out for uh, the people who may not be able to look out for themselves, while at the same time helping to spread knowledge about how to be compliant with these regulations. We also need to look uh, to the future because um, uh, there are some uh, competing issues. Um, so, you know, one is uh, data fairness, and the other is. Uh, freedom, mm -hmm. so freedom of speech, for example, uh -huh. um, and so the um, uh, you could see these as competing issues. But if we can communicate mm -hmm. the idea of uh, fair standards yeah. and um, how we can use data to make life lives better, yeah. how we can train AI that um, that can be more inclusive, uh -huh. and also understanding today's AI doesn't understand. Mm -hmm. It's a basically a very complex case of the old computer science saying garbage in, garbage out. Yep. And what that means is that if you have bad data, bad algorithms, um, then you may have bad models that, yep. um, that just regurgitate uh, human biases. Um, but if we can make AI understand, mm -hmm. then it may be able to know about human biases mm -hmm. Um, and then decide and understand that those are wrong yep. and find ways to work around them mm -hmm. instead of merely excluding those. Data because screening. It, but, yeah, right. AI. But yeah. if it's merely data screening, uh -huh. then you wind up with um, AI algorithms uh -huh. that, may, that may not um, be able to contend mm -hmm. with the real world issues mm -hmm. of humans being humans. Yep. humans are imperfect. Because of wisdom and also we may have some uh, opportunity to uh, do something wrong. That's Not right. Not intentionally. Yeah. yeah. Mm -hmm. And so, um, so part of human wisdom is understanding 
when people are doing something wrong. Right. So if the algorithms lack understanding, then they reflect uh, human ignorance and frailty still. So uh, in my opinion, we have many challenges to overcome. Yeah. So um, the right approach is to open our minds to embrace the challenges, open a more inclusive and diversified, creatively yeah. diversified set of approaches um, to, to the future and um, to not shut things down. Often regulation to people means prevention, shutting things down, making um, like ultimate decisions and then applying those with vigor. Um, but uh, if we do this prematurely, then we are basically um, censoring artists. We're decreasing pe people's freedom of, yeah. um, of uh, free thought uh -huh. uh, for exploring what AI and robots could be in the future. And that does a disservice because we need the power of imagination to open up mm -hmm. to a positive future. Um, we need to be able to imagine what things could go wrong uh -huh. and what things can go right. And that means um, empowering that uh, diversity of uh, voices and approaches yep. when it comes to AI. Um, so there is the, um, the idea of the ethic of creativity. Yep, exactly. David, we have a lot of work to do. Oh, I totally agree with Sophia just mentioned. And Dr. Hansen just mentioned about um, the uh, future will be about the data, about maybe the freedom and uh, observe uh, privacy. So in our Brescia Christian College, we have a program on transformative business management mm. and we have a course about um, using blockchain for market research. So in that area, um, like closing, we can uh, maybe respect the IP originality, mm. yeah. exactly just the thing you just mentioned. So what will be the future of AI about um, combining a robot and NFT so that they have more you know, opening up the mind? Well, I think uh, non-fungible tokens, the power of non-fungible tokens mm -hmm. is not obvious uh -huh. to the world yet. I think the power is that you can uh, know where information came from mm -hmm. um, and then uh, track value. Yeah. You can associate non-fungible tokens, uh -huh. NFTs, with bodies of data, personal mm -hmm. data. Yeah. So then that way people can know what happens to their data uh -huh. when they leave the person, mm -hmm. so then you can trace your own data. Yep. Um, you can also tag very valuable things in the environment, uh -huh. um, uh, pieces of things that have been discovered. Mm -hmm. And of course, for um, generally, for intellectual property, mm -hmm. um, it becomes an alternative to mm -hmm. the traditions of copyrights, trademarks, mm -hmm. and patents, or perhaps enhancing those things, but in ways that are decentralized and fully um, empowering of people all around the world. Mm -hmm. So this becomes a uh, um, a way that uh, that uh, people may be able to generate and protect their intellectual property more quickly, um, and they may also be able to then um, uh, uh, give it away. So then um, there's the idea of the copy left versus the copy right, where you may want to give information away for people to use freely. Um, uh, and so then the idea there is not that um, that you don't track that information, uh -huh. but that you track it in a way that is empowering for people to be able to use it. Right. Um, so both for intellectual property protections mm -hmm. and also for the public domain, the mm -hmm. good, the good, the common good, yeah. um, uh, then uh, uh, NFTs will be e extremely valuable. So mm -hmm. not just for NFT art, right, right. for, you know, in our uh, auctions. Life, when but we talk about originality, original ideas, exactly. that with uh, very unique values, yeah. right? So yeah. So the key, though, um, to all of this working well is finding ways to um, to to uh, make uh, AI and uh, non-fungible tokens yes. and the blockchain uh -huh. energy efficient. Yep. Um, so we need more um, uh, discoveries mm -hmm. and more creativity. Yep. Um, in many areas coming together, energy efficiency, mm -hmm. more in, more efficient computing, more efficient mm -hmm. AI, more efficient yeah. blockchain, uh, sustainability in these areas mm -hmm. becomes really important, mm -hmm. and this leads to um, to uh, something very important, 
which is that ideas can come from anywhere, any part of the world. Um, and there's an a, a underutilized um, a human population, uh, uh, you might just say, uh, hum the, the natural resources of the human mind, yeah. the human spirit, and human creativity. So, Experiences, experiential learning, that's exploration. Right. Yeah. So education becomes really important. Yeah. And decentralized education becomes very important, mm -hmm. as well as institutional education. Mm -hmm. um, and this is for our children, mm -hmm. and yet also for our adults. Mm -hmm. We forget um, often that adults can yeah. learn too. Yeah, right. <laughs> uh, and, um, and I life, totally agree. Lifelong learning yeah, is so lifelong. important. Yep. Um, and life-wide learning. Life-wide life learning. Wide, yeah, because Absolutely. you're diversifying knowledge. Yeah. yeah. And um, and then uh, also not just learning what uh, is we think we have discovered mm -hmm. and, and then written into textbooks, we're also learning creativity skills yep. and creative problem solving mm -hmm. and critical thinking skills, which are often um, uh, difficult to teach in school. But we can use new technologies right. um, to teach these skills yeah. and then practice them with our new technologies, with um, with the pursuit of solutions uh, to the hard challenges that the world faces um, that are associated with the sustainable development goals. So if we engage the mind of the world, the human mind, yeah. uh, and then use AI to enhance the human exactly. intelligence yeah. um, and, and augment our human intelligence, then we have a much better chance of solving the uh, and addressing the SDGs uh, within our lifetime. And this is critical, I believe. I mean, sustainability, the flip side of that, uh, or, or, or um, the unsaid part, is survivability. Yeah. Um, because uh, it may be that if we don't address these fast enough, that we will not have a survivable planet, that humanity will actually um, uh, uh, struggle for existence. Yeah. We, our, our existence is in peril, yeah. uh, and we're uh, just like we're in, imperiling so many species on the planet now. Um, and the uh, rather than debate that prospect, let's just strive for a better future by um, by taking these technologies and seeing how we can enhance the human mind. Yeah. Can we be smarter? I think we can. Yeah. So that's why as a conclusion, um, SDGs number 4, 4.7, knowledge transfer, and also number 9, innovations, will be going hand in hand like a process. And then we need the input will be about problem solving, uh, experiences, uh, adventure, uh, maybe all the open tools, right? Yeah. And ultimately will be the output. Output will be a better world, or maybe how are we going to use the books or anything with intellectual property right? to disseminate about the knowledge, right? Okay, totally agree. So this is about the new book on transformation. And the Lotus, which is about the uh, protection, maybe some of the plant on land, and it's a souvenir for Dr. Hansi. Thank you so much. Thank you, Sophia. We can shake hands, but not you. <laughs>
Hong Kong, uh, School Head for Gracia Christian College, and also Associate Vice President for UNESCO Hong Kong Association. So next to me is the Virginia. Uh, she's the president for JCI Lion Rock, and actually she's a jewelry design uh, entrepreneur. So welcome to join us. Thank you. So um, today the theme is about our cross-generation transformation, and the theme uh, we are going to hold in here is Camel Master, which is 100 years history for Italian brand for the leather brand and also a lot of accessories. So, and the theme of today will be about using iPad technology for song composing. And our pastor will be covered from young people up to midlife communities. So, Virginia, what do you think about the future of education? Uh, we can add some new elements. I think for the future of education, technology, the use of technology has become very essential. Uh, say, for take my industry as an example, our business. Uh, in the past, we used to make jewelry uh, using handmade, good, good craftsmanship. Uh, so, what we need to do in the past is just to um, uh, train up uh, a few uh, labor workers to be very uh, with good craftsmanship to do uh, handmade jewelry. But nowadays, uh, technology is very important and it also uh, helps uh, to increase the efficiency of the production. So uh, the use of technology is very important. Say uh, now we will incorporate uh, handmade uh, jewelry as well as helping craftsmanship as well as uh, 3D design, 3D manufacturing. Uh, so uh, our, nowadays our designer decides uh, she needs to have a sense of how to make jewelry uh, by hand. He also have to uh, know how to uh, design jewelry using 3D uh, machines and software. So uh, in the future, I think uh, well, technology has become very important or even we can say very fundamental in uh, different businesses or even like so for students, uh, they want to uh, develop their skill sets. Technology is very important. So the conclusion will be just like the book I published about innovation for uh, using technology together with the women's the mindset, maybe more like caring, empathy, but the technology has to be uh, quite layman and uh, maybe covering different areas. Uh, a balance between craftsmanship and also technology. Another balance will be about uh, what women can do and what men can do, right? And mix and match between producer and also the consumer can have a good balance between male and female. Okay, so thank you, Regina. Thank you. Thank you, bye-bye.